Hi friends, welcome back to another video. If this is your first time here, my name is Mimi. And if it's not your first time, welcome back to another video. So today I have a very interesting video that I wanted to come on here to just share with you guys. Obviously, I will be using my personal experience um, with you know having the minimum wage mindset for such a long time and how I literally got out of it. Um, so I just wanted to come on here to just share how, you know, maybe things that I did, how that can help you get out of your minimum wage mindset. So that's what this video is go going to be about. If that, if this is something that you're interested in, continue to watch. I'm sitting right by the window. So if you guys hear cars, I apologize, but this is, this room has the best lighting right now. It's actually cloudy outside. So, um, yeah. I don't really have the fancy lights yet. I don't really have the fancy YouTube setup. I'm just a small YouTuber, so <laughs> I depend on the natural light. So for many years, way before I met my husband, I had minimum wage jobs, right? I'm a college graduate. I graduated with, with a bachelor's in sociology. I was gonna go for my master's in social work. After I graduated college, I got a substitute job where I was going to uh, schools and be a substitute when the teachers are out. I did it for a little while and then um, I got another job where I worked at a preschool as a teacher assistant. Obviously, I was making minimum wage. I think it was like maybe, I remember $15, $16 per hour. I was doing that and I was at that job actually when I met my husband and then from there I got into another school where I got another teacher assistant job but this one I was making a, a more, much more than minimum wage but it was still less than 30000 per year so let's be real. Um, so I did that for years. I was just comfortable like I was, I was barely making nothing but I was just comfortable. Um, obviously because I lived with my parents I didn't have any bills the only bill I had was my car note and paying my car note I still had enough money with what I was making so um, and I had no savings you guys I knew nothing about financial literacy I knew nothing about saving for retirement I knew nothing like I had none so I was making money I was using it to buy clothes shoes um buying food that's all i was doing literally i had nothing to my name and that's one of my biggest regret when it comes to financial literacy i wish what i know now at 32 years old i wish i knew that right after college right so i did that for years and when i met my husband i know he was like working towards better in his life so he was working towards you know getting a good job, trying, um, getting into tech because he has a technical background. Um, my husband can fix phones, computers, TV, um, laptops, cars, like he's very technical like that. So he was trying to get up there in the ladder, right? So after we got married and I started like, you know, meeting some of his friends and uh, be making, you know, developing friendships with their wives. And these women, some of them are like nurses, some of them are like, in tech right these women are making close to six figures or more and i just was like what am i doing with my life i'm just like here like content with 15 16 dollars per hour and like there are times where like my husband would try to like push me like when i was there was one time he told me he was like i think you should get into tech I was like, there's no way. I have no technical skills. I have no technical background. I, I'm not even, a, I wasn't even computer literate at the time, right? I knew how to use PowerPoint. I knew how to use <laughs> Word to type essay. That's about it. But I wasn't like as technical inclined as I am today. So um, I was like, no, I'm not interested. So I sat on the idea for a long time and I was still like doubting myself, like, how come all these people are making so much um you know they they are wearing nice outfits you know i'm not really materialistic but materialistic but um i've always been the girl to shop on sale right i feel like even when i start making big big money i'm always gonna shop on sale and i don't even think i have a designer 
anything in my closet. I'm, I'm a really simple girl, simple outfit, simple everything, right? But when I put things together, it look nice. That's the type of lifestyle I'm used to and that's the type of lifestyle I want to, for myself. That's, that, that, that's the type of lifestyle that define who I am. So like watching them, you know, drive nice cars, um, have all this, making this good money, have nice cars, going to fancy places, doing this, doing that. And if you know my Nigerians, I love my Nigerian people, but y'all know, y'all know, y'all like to show off some of y'all. But I give it to you guys though, because y'all work really hard. And like, I started make, becoming friends with these women and I started having conversations with them, like what they do, how they go about things. And not even, maybe like less than a year ago, uh, one of my husband's friends, he uh, he has a, his wife who, her and I became really close within a year or so. And she's into tech. She's actually in cloud engineering and she's she's doing good for herself and when we have conversations and she was like Mimi I think you should get into tech she told me she think I should get into tech at that moment I wasn't like really sure about it because in my mind anything that has to do with cloud engineering has to do with coding and that's not really true like solution architects right they don't really need to know how to code but it will be a good idea if you, it will be a good thing if you have it on your resume, but they don't really need to know how to code. So every time I hear like cloud engineering or anything that has to do with cloud, I'll think about coding and coding, like I'm really scared of coding. Every time I think, every time I hear the word coding, I'm scared, but coding actually is something, it's, it's something that I plan to achieve. I plan on taking a coding class later on, but I just wanted to, uh, you know, give that, uh, give the little story how, I was like so scared. I was so intimidated. I'm like, I don't, I was thinking I don't deserve to make this big money. I don't deserve to be in tech. I don't deserve, like, I'm not smart enough. I'm not worthy enough. Um, you know, I just wanted to settle for the 15, 16 dollars per hour. So until like my husband literally pushed me, right? He was like, I think you could do it. And I think you need to do it. Like two and a half years ago, I started like taking um, some courses online, like basic courses, but I started taking courses just to have some, some type of experience, right? So from there on, like I created a resume. Of course, I didn't have um, paid experience, but I did uh, create a, um, created like a resume and I did um, a friend my one of my husband's friend who actually owns a company actually helped me through the process I started looking for entry-level jobs because I knew I have no experience so I started looking for entry-level jobs I started applying I started applying when I tell you guys I applied to so many jobs I applied to over 100 jobs literally over 100 jobs and I had I, I've shared the story before I, I had over 20 interviews when i say into 20 interviews i'm talking about like video interviews like sitting and having video interviews zoom interviews microsoft team interviews i had over 20 of those i had so many reject 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 every time i do an interview i'll do like let's say four or five interviews a week and then i'll feel so good about it and then towards the end of the week i'll be like man i think i'm gonna get a job offer today and the end of the week comes you don't hear nothing from them or maybe the following week comes you get a whole bunch of no you didn't get the job so i experienced that for a whole for a long time i experienced that for a long time and i was so discouraged i was so discouraged and you know for some reason i told myself i'm not gonna give up i told myself i'm gonna keep i'm gonna back this up with prayer of course because i'm a woman of faith i'm gonna back it up with my faith i'm gonna back it up with prayer i was applying every day i was applying to like 10 to 15 jobs in the morning 10 to 15 jobs at night i was applying every day i was like i'm gonna get this job and literally um i think i shared the story here uh, before but I'll, I'll share it again for those of you that haven't watched that video I'll just give like a little quick summary of it but literally how I got my first ever job um, it, I, I I had a I had already interview for a specific job that I thought I was going, going to get um, the I checked after the interview like a week later I emailed the recruiter and he told me oh sorry you didn't get the job they went with somebody else and I was so discouraged. I was like, okay. And so I kept applying. And a week later, maybe a couple of days to a week later, 
that same recruiter hit me up and asked me if I'm still available because the person they offer the job to didn't pass the drug test. So I told them, yes, I was still available. I still, I'm still open to the job because at that point I was desperate for a job, okay? I was like, I was thinking to myself, dang, I'm like a second choice, but then I wanted a job. So I was, I told him, I was like, yes, I'm still open. And you know, like God is so good during that period while, you know, I'm, I even went for like the, I even did the drug test for that job. I passed the drug test. I passed the background check. I did everything. And I was at the point where I was, I was just waiting on the laptop to, so I could start working. And then I got an even better job offer. This job was offering me this first job that um, that came back to me that the person didn't pass the drug test. They actually was going to give me like twenty five dollar per hour, and then they I, and then like maybe a couple of days later, I got an even better offer than twenty five dollar per hour. So of course I end up going with that one. And that's literally how my story changed. Like my whole, I was doing, I was, before that I was in education, of course. I was doing, uh, I was teaching and I was making less than, less than 50,000. This was like less than, <laughs> maybe like two and a half, three years ago. I was making less than 50,000. And now it's like, I'm not going to say what I make, but I'm up there. So, and I'm extremely grateful for, you know, this transition being, you know, having an open mindset and taking that risk to taking that risk to enter a whole industry that I have no knowledge in, no experience in, but I still wanted to do it. And let me tell you, I'm sharing this. If anybody is watching this and you're thinking about doing a job that you think you don't qualify for, you think you're not experienced enough, you think you're not smart enough. Let me tell you, if you put your mind and time into it, you can do it. You can do it because I'm a testimony to that. I had zero knowledge when it came to Excel, right? And a lot of basic um, level jobs in IT require basic Excel skills or require at least basic to advanced Excel skills. So I had zero. I had never used Excel before, before getting into tech. But I literally took, the course I took was like 20 plus hours. So every day I was doing like an hour or two. Every day I did that course. And then I did a whole lot of practice, um, practice, um, uh, practice videos on YouTube. Like I would watch a whole lot of YouTube videos, like, a, like practice Excel. I will follow along with the instructor just to sharpen my skills. So I did a whole lot of that. And that's how I got really good with Excel. Like now I'm really good. Like I'm, I am good with functions like the V lookup. I can do it like really quick. And that's like, I can do all the sum ifs, concatenate. I can do all of that with Excel. And I just wanted to say like you, your mindset is all you have and you have to really control your mindset and not let it control you. So if you feel like you are you you can't you're not better than you if you feel like you can't do any better than what you're making right now or can't do any better than where you at right now you feel like you don't even have education right let's say if you don't even have a bachelor's degree right there are jobs like right out there there are tech jobs out there that re that requires only associate degrees there are tech tech job out there that require only high school degrees if you go on linkedin and you look for them you look when you when you're searching make sure you search uh entry level a lot of them when you read the description they will just ask for high school degrees so you don't even need education right to to actually get into tech however it's like the only way you you actually need education it's like if you're trying to go for some type of managerial position like let's say I, I only have a bachelor's degree right so let's say if i'm trying to go for like a managerial position that requires at least a master's degree then i'm not qualified for that position because i don't have that master's degree but now a lot of a lot of jobs actually they just look for the technical skills they don't really care about your degree like that if you have the technical skills on your resume and you could perform it while they you can prove it that you have these technical skills you're good and 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 let me tell you a lot of entry level jobs honestly you don't really need like really strong skills they will train you they will train you like my excel skills like i was really good with my excel skills but my first job i i was i, I was trained my job right now i'm i'm still 
I'm still, I use Excel every day. So it's like, I sharpen my skills every day. There are new things I learn about Excel every single day. There's, there's something called the wild V lookup. I never heard of it before, but I used it like not long ago at my job. So it's like, you learn every day and you, you, uh, try to, you learn every day and try to also, one thing I will also say, try to like, surround yourself with like-minded people to like the where you want to go like example if you're trying to be in let's say if you're trying to be a teacher right try to try to surround yourself with people that are teachers and like have conversations with them try to try to have a mentor have someone mentor you like for me right now i'll say almost all my husband's friends almost all of them including my husband is in tech so it's like I have a whole lot of people that can reach out to for help if I'm stuck with something. I have a whole lot of people that can guide me to the next step I'm trying to get to. I have a whole lot of people that can guide me to the next, my next career goal. So it's like, try to like surround yourself with people like that. And um, you can do it. You can do it. Let's just shift our minimum wage mindset. Let's get out of that. Like this is 2022 and you know, we all, we all have to go up. We all have to level up. We have to level up. I don't care how old you are. You're, it's never too late for you to learn any skill. It's never too late. Go on Udemy. It's U-D-E-M-Y.com. Udemy. They have tons of technical courses that you could take. That's where I took all my Excel course. That's where I took my SQL course. That's where I took my Actis course. That's where I took my um, Cloud Practitioner exam course. So it's like they have a whole bunch of courses. And when you're looking for courses to purchase, look for courses on sale. Like especially the ones that are like two, three years old. The material is the material is still the same. It's just that it's a little outdated. It's like two or three years old. But the stuff is still the same. So just buy courses on sale. Even if you feel like you're not gonna take you don't have time to take the class right now. Just purchase the class and just just create an account, purchase the class and just keep it there. So when you feel like you're ready to go to take it, you take it. So that's all I wanted to come on here to share with you guys. That's how I shifted my mindset from a minimum wage mentality to where I'm at right now. Um, I'm grateful. I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'm ever going to come on here and say how much I make, but I'm grateful that I don't live paycheck to paycheck. And I'm extremely grateful for that because it's my hard work and the grace of God that got me to where I'm at. So I just wanted to come on here and just motivate you guys. I hope this video blesses you. If you enjoy this content, please give it a thumbs up and don't hesitate to subscribe and join the family. I will see you guys in another video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.